And joining us from the South Pole directly, Dr. Christine Corbett Moran. Good morning. Good morning. So what's the temperature like outside right now at the South Pole? Uh, Right now it is minus 96 Fahrenheit or minus 135 with wind chill. 135 degrees below zero. With wind chill, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Now we've just had to deal with you know, temperatures in the low 90s with heat indexes in like the 110s, and we thought we were miserable. I think you win. <laughs> we basically have the opposite weather. So if you just add a minus sign, then you, you get the weather here. But I think it's miserable on either end of the spectrum. <laughs> now, just to recap for our listeners, you are stationed at the South Pole and you're doing research. Tell us a bit about what it is you're working on. Yeah, so I work maintaining a telescope called the South Pole Telescope and running the observations and keeping it running over the winter where at least nine months we have no contact with the outside world, no planes coming in and out. And this telescope is looking at the echoes of the Big Bang and is able to tell us a lot about the early universe and our place in it. And you've been there for how many months now? Seven months. Now, we spoke to you in February, I believe, when you'd just been there a little while, and you were looking forward to the long overwinter. Are you still having a good time? I am still having a good time, especially with the auroras in the winter. I get to walk out to the telescope. It's almost a mile from station, and it's very remote and surreal, and it's a special feeling. Of course, I am looking forward to eventually getting back to civilization, but uh, so far I've been enjoying my stay here. I understand that the midwinter point was a few weeks ago. Was there a big party? Yeah, so for midwinter, it's basically a holiday in all of Antarctica. There's many scientific research bases here on the continent, and everyone celebrates midwinter. It's a big holiday. And here at the South Pole, we had a gorgeous, fancy dinner, cocktails, all sorts of celebrations, and then we watched the movie The Shining. (laughs) The Shining. Now, that seems like a great movie to watch while you're trapped in the middle of an ice sheet thousands of miles from anything. (laughs) Yes, and at a particularly funny moment, one of the the people who volunteers as a firefighter on station held up their axe against the screen so you saw the shadow from the projector. And luckily that was just a joke. Everyone here is quite nice. (laughs) (laughs) All work and no play indeed. And you're working a lot down there, obviously. You said you have to walk to the telescope. Describe a little bit as to what it takes to do that, just walking distance of a mile to the telescope in those conditions. Yeah, so it takes me about 15 minutes to gear up. Some people can do it quicker, but... I wear several layers of thermals, several pairs of socks, boot liners, four pairs of gloves, overalls, a gigantic $1,000 fancy jacket that's on loan to me from the U.S. government, two balaclavas, and then ski goggles, and a lamp. When it's very dark out, it's easy to stumble in the snow, and then after all that, I can go walking, but luckily, I have so much gear on that unless the wind's extremely high, I'm not particularly cold. In fact, sometimes I'm more cold inside the station than walking out in minus 95. If I had to put that many layers on, the first thing I would have to do is scratch the middle of my back. Luckily, I haven't had too much of of that problem, but I think I have the cold to focus on and distract me. And you have to make that journey every single day to maintain and do work on that telescope. I do have a partner who also works on the South Pole Telescope, and she and I kind of split duties. So I don't actually have to go out every single day. I go out about half the days of the week, and the other times I do work on a computer inside the station talking to Dr. Christine Corbett Moran at the South Pole. You are at the Antarctic Station right now talking to us by phone. It's good to hear from you. Glad you're having fun. Now, you are scheduled to come back to civilization when? A few weeks into November. So the first plane from civilization comes to us end of October, and then I'll have to be here for a few weeks to transition to my colleagues who will continue running the telescope when I'm gone.
That's correct. And I have, along with several other people, including my colleague at the South Pole Telescope, applied to be an astronaut. At least three out of the four of us who applied are currently getting our references checked, including myself, which means we kind of made the first pass cut. Of course, it's an extremely competitive process, and I don't think myself or anyone else on station expects to make it all the way to the end, but it definitely is a unique training experience being down here, I think quite similar to space missions that astronauts might get to go on. So hopefully I'll make it further in the process and I'm looking forward to reporting back my success or probably failure there. So hopefully we'd love to check back with you halfway to Mars. Do you ever feel when you're walking out towards the telescope all suited up that this could be what it's like walking on Mars? Absolutely. Especially when I look around at the landscape, which is desert-like, very barren. If the moon's up, I can kind of see the ice going, knowing that there's no humans but our little outposts for a long, long ways. It does feel sometimes like walking on Mars, and I just feel like if I don't make it to Mars, at least this is a really beautiful and serene place to get the chance to visit. Well, you're certainly doing something not very many people get to do. How many people are currently at the station right now? There are uh, 46 people on station right now, including myself. And they're all your brand new best friends, aren't they? <laughs> We're very close. I would say more like a family than best friends. And because you've been there for, well, just about seven months now, I have to ask this question. What was your last meal? What, what did you have to eat today? Uh, tonight, we had actually tacos. So it was really quite nice. There was some fried rice, some guacamole, of course, in the freezer, you know, salsa, black beans, all those kind of trappings of, of Mexican food, and the chefs do a real good job here. But no lettuce or tomatoes, right? No lettuce or tomatoes. Um, sometimes we do. We have a greenhouse, so occasionally we'll get some lettuce, tomatoes, and cucumbers from that. But what we don't get is any fruit, you know, avocados, anything but lettuce, tomato, or cucumber. And it's nice to talk to you by phone. How often do you get a chance to make phone calls and talk to friends and family? Luckily, we have about 12 hours of internet connection a day, and during that period, we can make voice calls, which are pretty high quality. So I talk to my fiancé every day on the phone, and then on the weekends, I talk to my mom, and I've been making an effort to call at least two friends every weekend just to kind of chat and keep up relationships that might otherwise go the way of just casually keeping track of each other. Would you come back? next year? Well, I do have a life to get back to. I am engaged and we're looking forward to get married next year. And I also have a postdoc to get back to. That said, I certainly have liked my time down here and I would come back in the future if my life supported that over the winter. I would jump at the chance to come back here anytime during the summer. Um, that's a shorter deployment. How many hours of daylight do you have right now? Zero. <laughs> and it's been zero for many months. So we have about six months total of darkness that I'll get to experience here. So you're in the dark at the South Pole. Thank you very much for joining us on the phone this morning. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. We will try to touch base again uh, before you leave and get back to the United States, however long that journey takes. And we'd love to keep in contact with you and best of luck. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure on this end too. And I feel like it's a miracle I can talk to people in the state um, even while I'm so remote. So very thankful for that and um, have a great morning.